snoozer. Fire breathing! Snoozer, this man is fire resistant. Inaccurate. Fire can range from around 400 degrees Fahrenheit to 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. However, this dragon's fire breath measures at 10,267 degrees Fahrenheit, which would likely disintegrate this van in a matter of seconds. Huh. We need to bring him down to the ground. What? Sack said he'll designate our van. Not if you move quickly, Snoozer. We're crossing through Winter Woods right now, and then we're going to bring him down near Shade Tree Pond. You stay here, Snoozer. We just need this. back there. I sent the dragon somewhere he'll be much happier, Snoozer. Dragon Rider. Oh! Can we talk about that book today? Sure, yeah. Wait a minute. You never explained how the dragon got here. I thought dragons were just made up. Well, they are made up, Snoozer. The only way a dragon like that could get here would be... Snoozer, I was working on an invention that could bring a character from a book to life, but I haven't told anybody about it yet. The only place I had written it down was... My blue book. Wait a minute. What's wrong? My blue book, Snoozer, the book that I have all my invention ideas in. I can't find it. Somebody must have taken it. Zot, run a scan in the van for me. Scanning. One foreign object found on passenger side of van. My scanners have determined it to be a recording device. Symbol associated with David DeVita. I knew it. David DeVita stole my blue book, Snoozer. He's in Spooky Island right now. Well, there's gonna be a different reading road trip, Snoozer, but we have to find that blue book. Okay, but we get to talk about the dragon, right? What? Oh, yeah, sure. In this book about unicorns that we got from the library yesterday. Oh my, we're busy. Seatbelts. Check. Backpack? Check, check. All right, snoozer. Ascending in three, two, one. And we're off. Autopilot activated. So where are we going today? Well, let me pull up the map, snoozer. We are headed for Spooky Island. Once we get there, we're going to take back the blue book and save Fuzzle Land from whatever else David DeVita has been doing. Along the way, Mrs. Hamilton is going to do a unicorn craft with you. Unicorn? Yahoo! What animals? Yeah, I figured we'd make today about mythical animals, since we already met a dragon and you have that unicorn book. I'm confused. Mythical animals, Snoozer. Those are animals of stories or legend. Animals that don't exist except for in our imagination. Now, some of these animals can be completely made up. Sometimes people just come up with their own ideas. And sometimes they're based sort of on real things. And other times they combine real things, just like the griffin is a combination of a lion and an eagle. Cool. 
So a dragon is a mythical animal? Yes, they are, Snoozer. And in fact, dragons are the subject of our first book, Dragon Rider, by Cornelia Funk. A dragon, a boy, a journey. Fire Drake, a brave young dragon, his loyal brownie friend, Sorrel, and a lonely boy called Ben are united, as if by destiny. Together, they embark on a magical journey to find the legendary place where silver dragons can live in peace forever. With only a curious map and the whispered memories of an old dragon to guide them, they fly across moonlit lands and seas to reach the highest mountains in the world. Along the way, they discover extraordinary new friends in unlikely places and a courage they never knew they had. Just as well, for the greatest enemy of all is never far behind them, a heartless monster from the past who's been waiting a very long time to destroy the last dragons on Earth. Oh boy, that sounds scary. Well, there's definitely scary parts, Snoozer, but this is a book for older readers. There's over 500 pages in it. 500 pages? I didn't know books could be that long. Is that even legal? I think so, Snoozer. Anyway, this book is full of great adventure. The story has some complicated moments because there are a lot of problems that the characters have to solve. I love all the imagination that went into this book. Cornelia Funk put a lot of research into the history of dragons and came up with a story that will blow people away. To find out what happens next, we'll just have to read this book later. I can't wait! But I may need to have Dodd read this book to me on three times speed, so I can finish it in one day! <laughs> well, Snoozer, all these things we're talking about with mythical animals remind me of one of my favorite mythical animals that we haven't talked about yet. Which one? The Yeti. Yeti? What is that? A Yeti is like a snow monster. I've been a big fan of snow monsters since I was super little, Snoozer, because they've been featured in books and movies and, of course, toys. In fact, this is one of my favorite toys when I was little, and it is a Yeti. Ah! Yeah, this was made by Fisher Price in 1997. It's got a Yeti, and watch this, Snoozer. Inside of the Yeti, there is an Arctic Explorer with his own rover. Ah! Uh, that looks like the Yeti ate the guy! Yes, Snoozer, but when I played with this toy, the Arctic Explorer always got away. The cool thing about this toy is you've got the Arctic Explorer, his own rover, the Yeti snow monster, and his big monstrous vehicle. It's awesome. It was always tremendous to imagine the Explorer out in the Arctic. And then he comes across a giant snow monster. And that's one of the great things about mythical animals. We get to come up with ideas in our heads of animals that might not be real, but they feel real when we're envisioning them. And before the world was connected and we could see videos and pictures from around the world, meeting a new animal was like meeting a mythical animal. What do you mean? Well, imagine back in the 1800s when Lewis and Clark were crossing the country. They came across a grizzly bear. Now we know all about grizzlies now, we can see them in zoos, wildlife rescues, on TV, or in books. But back then, Lewis and Clark had never heard of such an animal. So to them, it was like seeing a yeti or a dragon. A giant furry monster with sharp claws and a roaring voice. Wow, that is spooky to think about. Yeah, and there were no cameras back then. So if you saw something like that, you might not know how tall it is. And as you tell the story and people tell the story to somebody else, it just builds and the legend grows. So while a grizzly bear might be eight feet tall in a story, people might think it's 15 or 20 feet tall, giant like a dinosaur. And that may be where legends like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster come from. People see something real like a big fish, but through stories, it becomes much larger in our imagination until eventually people think there is a giant monster living in Loch Ness, Scotland, or there is a 12 foot tall ape-like creature living in North America. Oh, wait a minute, Snoozer. We're hitting some turbulence. Why, hello, friends. <laughs> This is your captain speaking. We're going to be in for a bumpy ride. What are you talking about? How did you get on my screen? I'm afraid I'm on more than just your screen. I have control over just about every one of your inventions. With the help of this beautiful blue book. We're going to get that back, Davida. Oh, are you? Well, I suppose you're traveling to Spooky Island to come take it back, were you? Yes, 
And we have a super fast van. And it can fly. Ah, but what good is a flying van if it isn't flying? That was actually really fun. Yeah, that was like an amusement park ride where you free fall straight down. Oh yeah, what are those called? Sky screamers, sky fallers. You know what, checkers? I want to make my unicorn now. Hold on, Mr. Greeny Pants. We'll be right back. What? Hi, Mrs. Hamilton. Well, hello, Snoozer. Are you all set to make your unicorn? Yes, I am. Oh, that's great. Well, it's going to look today like this. And the sheet you're going to need looks like this. So, as long as you have scissors, a glue, and you probably need a black marker or a black crayon for the mouth, you'll be all set. So I am gonna start cutting. All right, well I think I'm all set. So I'm just gonna arrange everything how I want it. how I did mine. Mine looks like this. The big reveal. How does yours look? Look at mine! I love it. And I love how you made it your own. Well, I'll see you next time. Bye. Enough of this. Checkers, you seem to really like that Yeti toy. How would you like to meet him? What? That's right. You're headed into the toy realm. <laughs> Whoa! It's cold! How are we gonna get back? Hold on, Snoozer. I'll use my checkers pad to get us out of here. Oh, right. Wait, someone's coming. Can I help you? I am Snoozer! Watch this! <laughs> Very impressive. I'm an Arctic explorer. I'm looking for a giant snow monster. <gasps> a snow monster? That's right. I've been looking high and low, but I haven't had any luck. I'm starting to think it's not out here. Of course not. There's no such thing as snow monsters, silly explorer. Whoa! Oh, yeah! Hey! Ah! Checkers, what do we do? We're trapped! We need to find some way out. My feet are frozen upside down. My wheels are stuck too! Can we talk about the other book now? Sure, why not? So How to Catch a Unicorn is by Adam Wallace and Andy Elkerton. And it's about a unicorn that is traveling to the zoo. But it has to avoid the children, because if the children catch it, it will lose all its magical powers. And there's a lot of things I love about this book. First of all, the unicorn is going to the zoo, and we get to come along for the journey with it and experience all the different animals they have. There's zebras and penguins, a whole bunch of different animals to see. It reminds you how fun it is to go to the zoo. Some of the text in the book is really cool too. The word rainbow is all colorful, and there's the word bite written, and the word bite has a bite out of it. So that's something to check out in every different page. The pictures are extremely colorful and vibrant, and the unicorn leaves a rainbow trail wherever it travels. Along with the animals, there's a lot of interesting stuff to look for on every single page of this book. It's a book for young readers, but the whole family can enjoy a lot about this book. There's action, humor, information about animals. This book has it all. That sounds really cool. I want to read it later. Yeah, and if we can ever get out of here, we can read it. Wait a minute. We can use your checkers pad to send us back home. It's gone, Snoozer. I lost it when the snow monster attacked us. We need to get back to the spot we met the explorer. That's where it is.
Did you hear something? Uh, oh, snoozer, I can't turn my head. Don't. I'm panicking! <gasps> my cool tool! It must have fallen out of my pocket. If I could just reach it. He's coming closer! Snoozer, hurry, use your vacuum to bring it towards me. Okay! Got it! Brace yourself, Snoozer. Sorry, Groucho Snowman. We are just trying to... Oh, never mind! Ah! Snoozer! Hey, pull that lever on the right for me. Are you okay? Me? I'm fine. But my rover's busted. I have some tools. Hey, maybe we can fix it. Alright, give it some power, Snoozer. Hey, you fixed it! Thanks! Did you hear something? We better get moving. But that rover is too small for us to fit in! Hmm, I think I have an idea. Woohoo! Uh oh, Snoozer, he's gaining on us! You got it. Well, I appreciate your help today. That was quite an adventure. No problem. And thanks for helping us find the checkers pad. Now we can go home! So, where will you explore next? I've had quite enough for today. I think my next expedition is going to happen from home. <laughs> Alright, well we better get going. It was great to meet you. Bye-bye! Oh. Hey! I still have my beautiful unicorn! Great, but Snoozer, I'm worried we're in some trouble now. Zot, give me a track on the book. No longer tracking. The book has been taken through Rainbow Way. Oh no! I bet David DeVita has gone to Bermuda! I can't believe he got away with our inventor book. This is the worst reading road trip ever! Maybe not yet, Snoozer. I have one more idea. We are headed back to the invention lab. Here, if we need to get your blue book back, checkers. Snoozer, take a look at this. Welcome back to FNN. It's bad, folks. It's really bad. Dragons spotted in winter woods. Giant robots invade Music Mountain. Everything seems to be coming out of Spooky Island, where inventor David DeVita lives. To run amok. Even Goober the turtle has been forced into early hibernation. I don't know, Jan. I don't know. Snoozer, you know how I wear this watch? Yeah? Well, this watch, Snoozer, has some pretty special abilities that I haven't told you about yet. Every reading road trip we've gone in so far has been recorded using drones just like this one. Really? Yeah, there's even a drone recording us right now. Ah, uh, I'm being recorded! That's right, Snoozer. And then the footage is sent to people across the world to experience our adventures. So our reading road trips have been seen by other people? I've been on TV? Woohoo! Hello, everybody! I am Snoozer! Snoozer, these are the 11 volumes of the reading road trip. All the adventures we've gone on this summer. 
Like this one right here, Ocean Animals. Cool, I want to watch it. Why is it a rectangle? Oh, it's a VHS snoozer. A what? It's VHS, I had to convert all my episodes to VHS. It's the only way my technology would work. What works? Snoozer, my watch allows me to go back in time and revisit places I've been before, but only places have been recorded. So my plan is to go back to past reading road trips and change the outcome. So we're traveling through time? Like a time machine? Something like that. What we want to do is go back to when DeVita and Deceiver stole the blue book, steal it back from them, and then change all the negative things that DeVita's done and stop whatever he's done to Fuzzleland. So if we're going back in time, that means there will be two of us. Two checkers and two snoozers. What happens if we see ourselves? No, that won't happen, snoozer. I'm going to have you stay here and monitor the screen. You might even see me on there when I go into past episodes. I'm going to have to be very careful to avoid myself. But all we have to do is find out which episode I lost the blue book in. Oh, yeah! I remember you dropped it when we were in the woods. Remember? You're right, snoozer. Savannah Animals. And that is where we're going to start. This is very complicated. It's a little complicated, snoozer. But I think it's going to work. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Snoozer, I'm in. Yeah, I hear you, but I don't see you. I'm watching the episode. Oh no, there I am. This is so embarrassing. Hey, I see us talking over there. Oh my gosh, that's DeVita. Oh yeah, it is. He was a silly face. And I was embarrassed with my television debut. All right, focus. This is the part where I come in. Musical trees. What a great idea. All right, let's go. Checkers, he never got the book. He tried, but you got away with it. Oh. All right, let's just make sure. Yeah, you're right, Snoozer. He never got it. What? Well, it seems in some point in the future, you're gonna steal my blue book and I'm trying to get it back. All right, Snoozer, let's try the next episode. I succeeded? Yes, I knew it! Genius! Don't worry about it, Snoozer. It's here, Snoozer. What's here? Nothing. You know what? Snoozer, in a second I'm gonna disappear and then I'm gonna come through that door, but don't worry. It's completely normal. Finally! What took you so long? There's only three basic things you need to remember to keep your mouth healthy. The first thing is something we talk a lot about here, and that's eating a healthy diet. Lots of fruits, vegetables, and water, and cutting down on things like sweets and candies and things that aren't healthy for our mouth. The second thing is flossing our teeth each and every day. Flossing our teeth is pretty easy, but if you don't know how to do it, ask your doctor, your dentist, or your mom and dad. Speaking of dentists, the third step is to... Follow the rule of twos. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! This is a really fun place. Let's park here and take a look around.
Let's see if we can find that chameleon. I wonder where he's hiding. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Yep, the blue book's in here too, snoozer. Let's try the ocean episode. Zot, the robot, at your service. Activating excited voice. Octopuses can squeeze into tight spaces as they are invertebrates, which means they have no skeleton. An octopus has a hard beak, like a parrot beak, which they use to break into and eat their prey, such as crabs and shellfish. The largest octopus is believed to be the giant Pacific octopus, which weigh up to 50. Ugh, <sighs> this is hopeless. Snoozer, there's one more episode to try. Australian animals. It's gotta be in there somewhere. Alrighty, Australian animals! Snoozer, this is my childhood house. This isn't Australian animals. Are you sure you put me in the right tape? Yeah, what happened? Must have mislabeled and messed up the tapes. This is the video of my childhood memories. The memories that led me up to the reading road trip. Hey, that's me! Oh my, you've aged so well. No, Snoozer, I'm the baby. Oh, you're smaller than me. <laughs> The video cut. What's going on? This is where I first learned to read. That's me reading with my big sister. I guess you could say this was the first stop on the reading road trip. What? This isn't a reading road trip! You didn't have your van yet! Snoozer, a road trip requires a vehicle and a destination. But a reading road trip only requires a story and an open mind. And the reading road trip never ends because there's always more stories to discover. Are you reading? Yeah. You're I'll such a good boy. Did. Okay. Hey! I think I found the right tape! It's over here! Great! Alright, let's play it. Time. I'm it's watching us talk! The toy realm. And we just disappeared! Hold on. I see Deceiver. Me too! He's popping his little head out! Aw, oh, poor Deceiver! He fell down and bumped his little head! That Devita is so mean! Their vehicle is vacant! My identical copy of the Checkers pad gives me unlimited access into his vehicle. Genius! Truly a genius! Now to capture that book! Hey! Snoozer is heading into the van. The prophecy was true! Checkers told me I'd be successful and I was. DCBR, I don't need you anymore, you inefficient hunk of plastic. I. Duh! It's a nice job there, copying my checkers pad. But did you know it had a self-destruct button? Ah! I'm just kidding. It's that button. This isn't the end, checkers the inventor. I'll get that room book back just as easily as I got it once before. You're no match for my wits. <laughs> what? Hey, give him back to me. This is an identical copy of Snoozer. Besides, you just called him an inefficient hunk of plastic. No, I didn't. 
Yes, you did. And you said you didn't even need him anymore. Right, but that was back when I had your book. Uh, now I don't, so I take it back. I want to go with Tinkers and meet Snoozer. He's just like me. We both have big kahuna eyes and trunks that look like elephants. Ah, just go then. But when you want to come home, don't think you can come crawling back to me. Wait, the van is still vacant. I can steal something else. Get away, leave me alone. Get away, leave me alone. You're back, and who's this? Snoozer, this is Deceiver. Oh yeah, hello, I am Snoozer. Hello, I am Deceiver. All right guys, let's check the news. morning and will be unable to attend fuzzle ball practice today. Oh no! What are we going to do? I don't know, Jan. I don't know. Okay then. So checkers, if we have turned our adventures into a 12 episode series, traveling around and collecting and reading and talking about books, we still have a problem. What's the problem? What are we going to call it? Seriously, 